Let's cut you off. Ooh. No, that would be thank you. I don't fit in, simply put. When I look at myself in the mirror, I don't always like what's looking back at me. I don't look like most fitness influencers. I don't have shredded abs, a lean physique, a big butt, a small waist, long flowing hair, flawless makeup. I don't own any Gymshark or Athlete, Women's Best, Navigation, or any of those expensive clothing brands. I buy my activewear from Walmart, Shein, and Amazon. I've worn the same shoes for years now because they get the job done. I don't work out for aesthetics or to compete. I work out for my mental health, for my physical health, to control my anxiety and depression, and to live a healthy lifestyle. So where do I fit in? Comparison is a disease. Social media really makes us compare ourselves to others online. I watched this girl's channel grow and now she has more subscribers and more views than me. This girl started her fitness journey after me and she lost more weight than me. I see other people's success as my failure and this shouldn't be. So I asked myself again, where do I fit in? Am I not a fitness influencer because I don't wear Gymshark? Can I still get brand deals if I don't spend $80 plus of my hard-earned money on expensive activewear? My body doesn't look like hers. I must not be doing enough. I don't see enough black fitness females. I don't feel represented. I got a comment on one of my videos a while back that said, I appreciate the fact that you don't wear expensive gym clothes like Gymshark or Athlete because I can't afford them. Honestly, I've always stayed true to that. As long as I look good and I feel good in the gym, I could be wearing a paper bag for all I care. This is why I do affordable activewear hauls because I know that people watching are people. They have minimum wage jobs. They are students who are trying to work into a budget. There is people trying to fit a workout into their busy schedule. This, I thought, is where I fit in. I think back to when I first started my fitness journey, the type of content I used to watch. I used to look up to a lot of white, lean, female fitness influencers. And the problem was that these women didn't represent me. Good morning. <laughs> I have my gym fit on, I'm about to go to the gym. But first I want to show you what I'm eating for breakfast. So we got a big old plate of protein pancakes with an egg. And I put way too much seasoning on it, my bad. My bad. But uh, today I use the, um, it's like low sugar. So they use this grape juice in the syrup. So we're gonna cut some calories there. So in my last video, I told you guys I was gonna go to Healthy Planet and just find some healthy alternatives and you know, just get some snacks. So I got my green supplement. So this one is in the flavor pineapple coconut and let's try it. Okay, it's tasting like greens. Tastes like greens, but it tastes good. <laughs> we gonna drink this up. Bon apple teat. And we go hit the gym. Mm. <laughs> there was little to no black fitness influencers on YouTube. The women I did follow weren't even the same body type as me. I followed women who were short, had good genetics so their glutes grew as their waist shrunk. They could afford to wear expensive gym wear and they could afford to go to expensive gyms. I, on the other hand, was tall, shaped like a box, had big boobs and gained weight very easily in my stomach area. I never really saw anyone who was overweight or struggling to lose weight on YouTube. This made me feel embarrassed. Even though I wanted to document my fitness journey, I was ashamed of my body. The fear of putting my body on the internet for everyone to judge was just mortifying. I waited until I lost a bit of weight and then I began posting my first few videos. I started off just by showing my routines and the comments were so supportive. People were inspired. They wanted to see more. They wanted to learn more. I thought to myself, I don't see anyone on YouTube documenting their struggles with weight loss. I didn't have anyone I could relate to and I wanted to be that someone that a young black female can look at and say, wow, she looks like me. She has the same body type as me. Maybe there is hope for me. If you didn't already notice, people radiate towards what they relate to. Most of the fitness YouTubers are short, white females. If you look at their comment section, you see, you're so relatable, you're so inspiring, you motivate me so much. While that's all great, I envied those comments. I really wanted someone I could relate to like that. I had no representation on YouTube, so I made my own. I started documenting my ED recovery and speaking on my struggles with eating. I was embarrassed to post anything online in fear that my friends and family would find out. I didn't want this to affect me negatively, but honestly, it was the opposite. It was amazing. After I posted a very vulnerable video, I got a bunch of messages from friends coming forward with their ED struggles as well. People I had known for years. I wouldn't even have suspected a thing. I realized we were all in this together. ED stemmed from guilt, which is why we all never spoke about 
about our struggles. My videos helped my friends open up and I saw this as a win. Not only did this motivate me to talk about things more, it was helping me on the road to recovery. Along with my friends, I was getting messages from viewers. I even had DMs on Instagram saying, I had no idea black people suffered from binge eating disorders as well. I thought I was alone. I was so ashamed to talk about it. Thank you for speaking out. I was so happy. I didn't look like other fitness influencers, but I posted my workouts, I am vulnerable, and people were relating to me. I continued to post on YouTube and was getting more and more females telling me that they had the same body type as me and they were inspired. The fact that people who had never met me in real life and that was motivated by me was just shocking. It made me feel so good. It made me want to keep going, but with the popularity, came some hatred. I would get some racist comments on my videos, comments about my muffin top or how I was still big. No matter how many positive comments you get, it's always the negative ones that still stick with you. I got a comment one time and this guy said to me, wow, I love the bravery. I just love seeing confident big women in the gym. I was like, I'm not, I'm, big woman what's going on but no matter how many positive comments you get it's always the negatives that will stick with you it took me a while to get over those comments but then i thought to myself how would someone who had the same body type as me feel about those comments it got me thinking how many women face this on the daily in public gyms i've gotten comments in gyms about how my boobs were too big to even try doing pull-ups i had a man out loud tell me wow good thing you started coming to the gym because before you were huge i've had men staring at me, following me at the gym, making me feel uncomfortable. I thought to myself, I needed to keep doing what I do for women like me who don't feel represented. I want to be there for that woman who looks in the mirror and sees her love handles and wonders why all the influencers videos tell her that she should lose them. I want to be there for the girl who thinks her hip dips are ugly. I want to be there for the black women who feel like they can't be strong and they can't make it. I want to be there for those who are struggling with their ED and need support, who want to be heard, who need someone to speak to. I want to be here to show you the vulnerable moments, the struggles, the success, and the happiness. This is why I started YouTube. I want to inspire and motivate women all over the world to accept and love themselves for who they are. If you want to change your body because you're unhappy, I support that as well. I want everyone to be their happiest and healthiest self, and this is why I made my channel. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Shay. I make videos documenting my fitness journey. I try to be as raw and vulnerable as I can with you guys. I show you what I eat in a day, what I eat in a week, I make health and lifestyle type of videos. I'm on YouTube to be the best, healthiest, and happiest version of myself, and I want you to be too. So if you made it this far in the video, comment some black emojis for some representation. If you don't have emojis, just type the word black. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Big appetizer. Let's cut you off. <laughs> I should have got the ravioli. How oh, the first day you do? Oh, it's even smaller bites than that. Mm -hmm. This is what I'll do. You bite the air. <laughs> Can I have a crouton? <laughs> you can't even eat nothing. A second date? Second date, I'm putting that whole meatball in my mouth. <laughs> Not even chew. <laughs> no, second date, like, uh, still classy, yo. Don't be ghetto. Yeah. So second day. That second day? Mm -hmm. On a fifth date? <laughs> Damn, you better marry him. <laughs> Just go eat like that. Look at your feelings. Show me your body. Deep in the fan. And I'm a tiger. Need you to back, 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 get up. Allie's gonna crack it open for us. Ooh. Yeah. Why does everybody keep losing and breaking? Hi. Hi. <laughs> 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 <la